Fala pessoal do Inside Xbox, bom, vocês estão acompanhando a nossa cobertura aí direto da Xbox do Xbox One. Além dos vídeos que a Thaís está trazendo para vocês, mostrando a feira, a gente vai ter as conversas com os produtores. Eu estou aqui com hoje muito especial. Se você jogou The Witcher 3, eu estou com o responsável pelo estúdio. O, eu vou ter que ler o nome dele, gente, desculpa, porque ele é polonês, né? É Mar Martin Wichinski. Correct me. It was almost perfect, almost. But, but it was actually not my name, so it's okay. uh, it Martin so Iwinski. So okay, sound like his name, but he's not his name, okay. Yeah. Martin Iwinski. Okay. Repeat after me. Martin, Martin Iwinski. Iwinski. Perfect. That's him. Um, so, thank you so much for your time. And you found CD Projekt 21 years ago, right? And what changed from the 1984 small studio to the 2015 company who released the one of the biggest game ever made? Huh. Okay, f first of all, you are making me look really old. I'm not that old, really. No, I am. I'm Seriously. older. <laughs> um, we actually started not as a game development studio, but as a game distributor. So for the first several years, uh, we're bringing games to Poland, localizing them, doing PR and marketing, and only when the distribution business started making enough money, we started the studio. But still, it's, uh, what, 12 years of the studio or even more? And uh, I still remember when we started working on The Witcher 1, and we had four people, and we thought that to finish it, we need 15. So uh, actually, five years later, when we finished finish The First Witcher, we had 80 people on board. It's a small, you know, under planning, so to speak. So we definitely learned, first and foremost, how to make games but also how to bring them to the players, how to be in touch with them, how to listen to them, and uh, how, to, how to really get their feedback and put it into our games. So um, I think what, what is different in our approach to games development and, and, and games publishing is that uh, we listen to gamers and we have direct contact with them, so there is no middleman. And then we can deliver to the market what gamers want and, and what we want as well. So it's fully our vision from the beginning, from the, uh, the way we design the game, to the box, to the every single element you see in store. And, and this kind of uh, approach makes a huge difference in the final product. We can see it. I'm, I'm glad you can see it. <laughs> yeah. And I know in Poland The Witcher is like a cultural heritage, like, you know, um, people love uh, and know The Witcher. How do you feel about it? I think it's a it's a cultural uh, heritage, not not only because of us. I think it, it all started with the book okay, by, by Andrzej Sapkowski. So, but, but you help he, it to yeah, make we, it we bigger. Yeah, we definitely did. I think he he he, he built the foundation, and uh, I think we created a, a a really cool success story in Poland, showing that uh, you know a Polish company can make games which are popular worldwide. And actually, Polish games development uh, scene is flourishing right now. So, how I feel. I feel really proud and I feel really happy. And uh, I remember the discussions we had, I don't know, eight years ago, when people totally didn't believe that in Poland you can make a great game. That would be successful. They're like, hey, you're kids, you're making some games, whatever, yes? And right now, when we launched The Witcher 3, the prime minister visited us, and the day after, we were invited to the president. So, you know, we don't want to meddle with the politics, but we are doing this to show people that you can, that you have dreams, and if you make them happen, you know, great things happen and, and change the world. So really, my, my, my dream is slowly coming true because, um, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago when somebody was asking me what Poland is famous for, I was scratching my head and I was saying probably <laughs> Polish sausage, kielbasa or vodka, yeah? And right now I can proudly say computer games and, yeah. and that's a major change. That's so great. And why the console market doesn't have anything like the GOG? I mean, and uh, of course, <laughs> and you can explain to our our, uh, our audience what is COG, please. Yeah, I think we are talking about console, okay, not PC. Why, yeah, why 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 it hasn't got anything? I think the, the consoles are very very specific format because mm. they are controlled by the first party, by the mm. company uh, which started them and owns them. So I think you should direct this question really more to Sony and Microsoft, not me. Uh, PC was always the platform where all the experimentation, all the new things were happening. It, it's a platform of freedom. You can do smart things, you can do crazy things, everything is allowed. And, and uh, so we saw uh, already eight or almost nine years ago that there is a place on the market for selling back catalog games, older games. 
and we launch a DRM free platform. So no, co no copy protections, 100% user friendly. We guarantee that the game always works. We started with older games, so we really were reviving the classics and making them compatible with the modern system. That's actually one of the disadvantages of the PC because the systems are being updated mm -hmm. constantly. And you mm -hmm. never know if like your 10 years old games yeah. work. Uh, gamers loved it, and right now we are bringing more and more new games. So um, that's pretty much uh, GOG.com in a nutshell. Okay. Um, well, I know you can't talk much about uh, Cyberpunk yet, <laughs> but we already know it's going to be much bigger than The Witcher 3, right? <laughs> and how much bigger? Uh, okay, no, I, I honestly, I, uh, I, bit, I, cannot, I, cannot, I cannot talk about it, <laughs> and the guy who spilled the beans is being crucified at the office as we speak. So um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's, let's leave it here. I think we, we definitely want, uh, and, and, and it's less about the size, it's more about the experience. I think we are, we are working on a lot of new stuff. I, I, I cannot talk about it right now because first and foremost, I want people to focus on The Witcher. I, think I know it. Gamers always love to think, what is going but, to but be the people, game 10 years from now? People already Project. They want more games. Yeah. Okay, so Hearts, Hearts of Stone, <laughs> it's out on October 13th. So. That, that's my next question. The DLC Hearts of Stone is the first big expansion for The, the Witcher 3. Uh, what players can expect from it? I'm really happy you used expansion, not DLC. Thank you for that. Because we give DLC wow, for free. That's it, yeah, right? that. um, at least 10 hours of uh, great story, like Witcher quality story. Um, we just had today the first reviews hitting and there are eights and nines, so we're really happy with that. New monsters, new enemies. Um, the story is happening in Velen, um, not far from Novigrad. So there is a main story thread. It's a very important information. You really do not need to finish Witcher 3 to play it. However, we, we strongly recommend you are at least on level 30. I would say 28, 30. Uh, so you have to advance through okay. the game. You don't need to finish it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a story branched off of an immortal villain called Olgert. Uh, there are new monsters, new areas. There is a chance for a new romance with Shani, who played uh, the first part, probably remembers her. I think for me, it's just worth to play to have the romance with Shani. Okay. I was romancing with Shani in The Witcher 1, so go and give it a go. And after Hearts of Stone, we'll be there another expansion, right? Um, can I talk about this new content and when it's going to be released? Um, we, are, we are planning for first half of next year and um, obviously we're already working on it uh, for some time. What I can tell you that it will be bigger. We don't know how much bigger. We estimated it for 20 hours, but every time we estimate at the end, it's, it's usually different. Quite often it's bigger than we planned. Uh, totally new locations uh, and again, uh, a similar thing uh, of a new story thread. You will need uh, to be at a certain level. Mm -hmm. Uh, new Gwent cards, mm -hmm. new challenges, uh, new monsters. Uh, but uh, when we were planning the expansions, the second one was was always the bigger one. So expect even more than uh, from Hearts of Stone. Okay, thank you so much, gente. Esse foi thank you. muito legal que ele falou. Para quem está esperando Hearts of Stone, fica um trechinho do trailer e a gente continua por aqui no Inside Xbox.